to part two of lesson one in unit eight. Today, we will be talking about a different type of t-test, still a t-test, but in this, uh, um, in this lesson, the examples that we'll be looking at involve two different samples. So, last lesson, we discussed writing hypotheses for statistical scenarios of which we'd like to test the validity. So for example, we had Frank's tomatoes. Um, in that example, um, we could test to see if the fertilizer was effective by comparing the average weight of samples from each crop. But in this example, we're comparing two samples, not just one like in our previous lessons examples. This is an example of a two sample t-test. The major difference here is that we are comparing two separate samples of two separate populations with different sample means and sample deviations. Let me clarify, uh, it's possibly two different populations. Um, that's not always the case, um, but uh, what we will see is that we will either way treat it as such. Okay. So, Pooled versus unpooled tests. Most of this is really informational. Um, so there is what's called a pooled test, which assumes the variance of the two populations to be the same, um, or the variances from which the samples are being pooled or pulled to be the same. Um, and so we are uh, <clears throat> not having to worry about differences in the variances of those um, populations from which we're pulling samples. In an unpooled test, the variances are assumed to be different, um, and we have to use a different formula to calculate the value of t and the value of p. Um, we are, in this course, always going to assume that we have equal variances and therefore always use a pooled two-sample t-test when doing a two-sample t-test. So, for our first example, we have a pharmaceutical company um, that's developing a new medication to help lower cholesterol levels. Uh, to test the effectiveness of the new medication, volunteers were separated into two groups. We'll call them group one and group two. And the reduction in cholesterol levels of the participants in those groups was measured after four weeks. Group one consisted of 15 patients that were given the old medication. And after the four weeks, it was shown that there was a mean reduction in cholesterol of 0.351 and a standard with a standard deviation of 0.058. Group 2 contained 17 patients and they were given the new medication. Uh, after four weeks their uh, cholesterol was measured and shown to have a mean reduction in cholesterol of 0.497 and a standard deviation of 0.077. Okay. So we're going to be conducting a two-sample t-test to determine whether the new medication is better than the old medication. We're going to be using a 5% level of significance. So something that is definitely helpful when doing these two-sample t-tests is labeling my mu's. So I would highly recommend whatever came first in the problem statement, that is all going to be my sub 1. So mu sub 1 is the mean reduction in cholesterol of the old medication. X bar sub 1 is going to be the <clears throat> sample mean of that first group, right? S sub 1 is the standard deviation of that first group. N sub 1 is the number of samples in that first, uh, that first group, okay? So, Labeling your muse is definitely helpful to keep track of where everything is supposed to go when you start typing things into your calculator. So let's formulate some hypotheses. So the uh, null hypothesis for these two sample t-tests is going to look the same in all cases. Mu1 is equal to mu2. So we're assuming no difference between the two samples and then we're testing for some alternative hypothesis which is some difference. Okay, what that difference is depends on the question and this is where we have to do a little bit of thinking and understand what 
the question is asking and how we need to formulate that alternative hypothesis. So I want to know if the new medication is better. The new medication um, is going to be represented by mu2 and for the new medication to be better I should have a higher value for the reduction in cholesterol. So what I'd like to look for is whether or not mu1 is less than or excuse me less than mu2 or that mu2 is greater than mu1. So looking for my test statistics very similar process here as um, it was in the in the previous uh, previous lesson going to stat tests option four this time which says two samp t test for a two sample t test we're using stats for the input method because i was given the statistics for my samples we're going to input the information into my samples or excuse me uh, into my calculator and that information should include um, everything from the uh, population mean, population standard deviation, and sample size for both the first sample and the second sample. Okay? And then at the bottom, we want to create that, that uh, alternate hypothesis that is starting with mu1, and in this case, is less than mu2. So I'm going to be selecting the option for uh, less than mu2. Okay? And then we're going to hit calculate. Uh, now that, I'm, I'm sorry I did forget one thing, at the very bottom there should be a question about whether or not this is a pooled um, test and we are going to answer yes because we are always going to be assuming um, no differences in the variances of the populations okay, as previously stated. So now when we calculate we should get value uh, t value of negative 5.99 a p-value of 7.4 times 10 to the negative 7. That's very, very small. So even with a significance level of 5%, the p-value is much less than that significance value. Therefore, we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, and thus the new medication is better at reducing cholesterol. <clears throat> So on to another example. Uh, this example is about runners. So we have two runners, Josiah and Billy, and we have recorded their um, sprint times uh, for the last fortnight uh, for the for the hundred meter sprint. So we have Josiah and Billy and two sets of data uh, representing their um, different um, hundred meter sprint times. First, we want to conduct a two-sample t-test to determine whether there's a significant difference between the runner's times on a 5% level. And then we'll ask or answer the question, which runner do we think is faster? So we could make a conjecture about who we think is faster if there is a significant difference. Okay? Uh, and then we'll explain our answer. So first thing we're going to do is formulate those hypotheses. So my null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference, that the, the mean run time, uh, the mean sprinting time for Josiah and Billy is the same. And then my alternative hypothesis is that they're not the same. All I'm trying to answer here is that there is some difference between the runner's times. Don't necessarily care who runs faster. Um, this is the quickest way to determine if there is a difference between Josiah and Billy. So, finding my statistics. So, calculator steps, just like it was in the second example about sugar packets uh, in the previous lesson. This time we are given a, a, a list of data. And so we need to first input that data into my calculator. So we're going to go stat, edit, and then in the list, list one and list two, I'm going to put the data for Josiah and Billy, respectively. So if you'd like, you can pause the video at this time and go ahead and put that data into those lists. But we're going to move on. So then we're going to go stat tests, 
option four for the two SAMP t-test. This time we're using data as my input method. We're gonna tell the calculator where my data lives. Um, so for my lists, we have list one and list two. We're always gonna use that frequency of one. And this time, um, for my alternative hypothesis, we're saying that mu1 is, in this case, not equal to mu2. And then just leave that um, answer the same. Yes, is this pooled, da um, um, uh, pooled test? Yes, it is. Okay, and I get my test statistic of 2.39 with a p-value of 0.0251. And that p-value is less than my um, significance level of 5%. Remember, 5% is 0.05, and 0.0251 is less than 0.05. So since the p-value is less than the significance level, there is enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And thus, there is enough evidence to support the claim that there is a significant difference between the runner's times. Okay? I could then make the conclusion or the conjecture that Billy runs faster because his mean time was lower. And you'll see on your calculator when you calculate that two SAMP t test, you'll get an x bar sub one and an x bar sub two that represent the sample mean uh, values for the data that you had entered. Okay. So. Um, there is a, 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 a practice for you to work on. Again, uh, if this is Ms. Thomas's class, you can ignore the due date. Um, that due date is there for, uh, for my class. You should just try to get that uh, homework done before the next class, okay? You should do, uh, view the video. The, the video this time is just another YouTube video of an example of using a TI-84 calculator. And this time it's uh, implementing a two sample t-test. And then um, again, you can review this lesson recording over and over as many times as you'd like. Um, I will try to pop in, uh, if you're with Ms. Thomas, I will try to pop in a couple times um, throughout the week to try to answer questions, especially uh, if you have questions about the homework. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching uh, and take it easy.